Good day and welcome to Classes in Session. Open your books to Genesis 17 and 1. Do you know him by his name? In Genesis 17 and 1, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. In this passage of scripture, we see there is a revelation, instructions, then a promise given. He proceeds to tell Abram, I am also changing your names to Abraham and Sarah, and that Sever shall have a child while they are both in their 90s, and Sarah has never had a child, and she is past reproductive age. The promise from God caused both of them to laugh. It was impossible. That would take the miraculous. While this is happening, God also destroys Sodom and Gomorrah due to the lack of righteousness. God is showing himself as El Shaddai and Almighty. What kind of God can destroy a nation or city? And how can God trump the science of an inspired reproductive system? There are things in our life that are impossible for man, but you must keep in mind, nothing is impossible with God Almighty El Shaddai. He's aware of the situation. However, he introduced himself to Abram in this season as the one who can exert all might. It's interesting how he chose these two situations to reveal himself as almighty, infertility, and wickedness. El Shaddai means the God Almighty and is the most widely used translation of the word. However, it also means God the Overpowerer, God of the mountains, all bountiful, supplier of all needs, providence over all things. El means God, and Shaddai is from the Hebrew root Shad, meaning breast, which means God's ability to nurture and satisfy and supplying all our needs like a mother does a child. El Shaddai means God all-encompassing and all-sufficient one, boundlessly powerful, beyond mighty. The names of God are important. They reveal a specific character to who he is and what he can do for you and I. My father named me, and my name is Jada Lala Cofield. My name means all-knowing and wise, daughter of joy that tills the field. My first name, Jada, is Hebrew, and it's in the Old Testament, in the Second Chronicles, and it's part of a bloodline and heritage. It is masculine, and it is pronounced Jada. It is a derivative of the word Yahweh, which means Lord, which is a sacred word to God, to, of God to the Jewish. It means we know you are Lord, Yahweh does. Jada means to know and all knowing. It was later made popular by the Pointer Sisters in a song and of course the actress Jada Pinkett Smith. And it is now mainly used as a girl's name and it's pronounced Jada. But I prefer Jada, which is what my grandmother and teachers and even some of my Jewish friends have called me. Lala is an African name for daughter of joy and Cofield, tiller of the field. What does your name mean? It matters. Find the meaning of your whole name if possible. And if you don't mind sharing, I'd like to see them below in the comments. If you do not have a meaning to your name, then I join in agreement with you that El Shaddai speak to you and give you a new name. There are ways of the Lord that many of us simply don't know because we do not apply the word of God nor understand the requirements to follow in his word to see him revealed in that matter. When God introduced himself as God Almighty to Abram, he did not know this side of God. God is not one dimensional. Even within the Trinity, he is revealed as multifaced. I've met people who only know him as God and nothing more. The promises of El Shaddai made to Abraham caused him and Sarah to laugh. 
They found his greatness to be humorous and impossible. He challenged their current belief system in this aspect of who he was. However, regardless of how Abraham felt, he obeyed the commandments of the Lord and his instructions to get his promise. God Almighty and El Shaddai is revealed in situations that seem impossible and usually speak or involve your inheritance and a great promise. When I moved to Botswana, I moved into a town home that had just been newly built. And many of you may have seen the episode my mother and I filmed for HGTV, House Hunters International. About a year after living there in the townhouse, the neighborhood had changed and I was not getting any rest. I began searching for a new home. And about six years prior to me even moving to Botswana, I had actually had a dream about this garden, but I never saw the house and I didn't even know where it was, but I knew it was a beautiful garden. So I had inquired to a realtor about this house I was looking for online. And when she took me there, she was unlocking the door and I just decided to just walk around to the back to see the garden. Well, guess what? It was the garden that was in my dream. So I put in a bid for the house, but unfortunately I didn't get it. And so by that time I had to go to Johannesburg and I had to be there for about a month. And while I was there, she called me and she asked me, was I still interested in the property because the deal didn't go through? But I was kind of confused a little bit because I was still wondering, did God just close the door and it wasn't for me? Or was he opening the door for me again? Because this property also was in the millions. I was very comfortable with the townhouse and what I was paying, but I was miserable living there. And I'm actually, I'm not one of those who tries to live outside of their means and I'm not trying to impress anybody. I've always had a nice home and I was restless with the decision. And I remember saying to God, do I have a faith issue? And this went on for days and I finally heard the Lord speak to me that this has nothing to do with your faith, Jada, or you not having faith. I want to give you this home. This is a promise and a covenant I had with your grandmothers. It's my good pleasure. I am the God Almighty. Now, I'm not telling this story about, you know, you're going to get a house and you're going to get a car. I'm talking about walking in an inheritance and learning to possess the land. Just like Jacob came to know the Abrahamic covenant from his bloodline, he can do, God can do the impossible. Therefore, eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Prior to El Shaddai revealing himself to Abraham, he had not seen this great promise God had for him. He even tried to create the promise himself. Some things you will obtain by faith, but others because of covenant. What we read is Abraham laughed, but then he obeyed. A covenant comes with obedience. Abraham was given instructions, Jacob and Job. Once I started the process of getting the house, two people spoke the exact same instructions to me to get the house and I obeyed. I had the faith to obey. People think their faith is big and so grand and is what grants them the victory. It's the obedience to the faith. It was the actions towards the promise they took that granted them the reward. Faith without works is dead. Faith is being sure in what we hope for or the one who has directed us, certain of what we do not see. I believe you will do what you say, God. I don't see it. I don't understand it. And I may think it's even foolish. However, because of my faith and which means my firm persuasion, assurance, firm conviction and faithfulness in you, I believe. Some of you need to inquire of the covenant in your bloodline. We get so caught up in the curses, but what about the blessings? And what if you think you don't have any covenants? 
then apply the word of God and the promises that are in this word and book of life. I had the faith to obey. You may be going back and forth thinking it's my faith and obviously I don't have enough. You do. But what was the last instruction the Almighty spoke to you? This is where the challenge comes. I mentioned to you before there are two things that God told me I could not do so that I could fill my purpose when uh, when I was 18. And I have a vow, a covenant with God. It's what keeps doors opening for me. What are your instructions? Jacob was told, don't take a wife of a certain group of people. Abraham was told to circumcise the men and keep his precepts and walk perfect. And these instructions were given along with the decree or covenant. Maybe we can't see El Shaddai in our lives because we don't do what's necessary to see him. When I would be invited to the ambassador's house, there was a protocol that had to be followed before we met face to face. There were things I was required to do even to gain access. I got the invitation, but to maintain my place and position, there are rules I had to follow to get to see, meet, and in fellowship with the ambassador. God who is, and he is who he says he is. He is not a man and he cannot lie. El Shaddai is God Almighty all-encompassing, and God the overpowerer, God of the mountains, supplier of all needs, all bountiful, beyond mighty, boundlessly powerful. Homework assignment. I need you to sit down and ask the Father, what have you instructed me to do? Or revisit the last instruction you were given and ask yourself, have I obeyed you, El Shaddai, so that I can receive my inheritance the good pleasure promise you desire to bestow upon me. Meditate on this name today. Be honest. If you've never seen this character of God, prepare yourself to behold him as such by starting and being obedient. Class is dismissed.